Hi guys, so I've been getting a lot of requests on my Instagram for a more in-depth tutorial on how I do my watercolor paintings. So I thought I'd create this short little video and give you a step-by-step -step guide on how I'm going to paint realistic tree silhouettes um, over a sunset night sky. So let's get going. So in terms of watercolors that I use, I mainly use um, Grumbaka, I think is how you pronounce it. I'm not entirely sure. But I do have this Winsor & Newton blue one that I use quite a lot. Um, so for this painting, I'm going to start out with a light uh, cadmium yellow on the bottom. Blend it up with a rose into the intense blue. And then finishing off with a um, mauve. And I... mauve? Mauve? Is that how you I don't know. Um, I'm also going to, I think I might throw in some black, but any kind of black watercolor will do, just at the top to make it look like it's going into a night sky. Um, sometimes I do use this uh, Liquitex ink um, for the night sky, but lately I've been using a watercolor black, um, but we will be using this ink for the tree silhouette, so do keep that in mind and if you can purchase some of this stuff I highly recommend it I use it in almost all my paintings um, as well as this white Liquitex ink titanium white I use this for uh, the stars that I sprinkle on um, with a toothbrush and then also if I want any highlights like a Milky Way I throw some of this white ink into the mix in terms of brushes um, I really only use these two brushes. I picked these up for super cheap at like my local art store. Uh, this one I use quite a lot, as you can see it's rubbed off, so I, I'm not sure what the number is. I think it was a number three. And then this one is a number number 10, I believe. Yeah, there you go, number 10, Royal Soft Grip. Um, these brushes are super cheap. Uh, People always ask me what supplies I use and how I afford it. I literally go for the cheaper stuff and it seems to work out great for me. I mean, I'm sure the more expensive stuff is better quality, but it seems to work fine for me. So yeah, just grab the cheapest stuff you can find is what I would recommend. Um, and in terms of the one brush that you will use for the tree, it's this one fan brush. Um, 10 slash zero. I honestly have no idea what that means. Um, Low, Lowell Cornell. Um, if, if any of you guys understand that, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> For me, I just picked it up because it was a nice size for the little, little paintings that I like to do. Um, but yeah, let's start painting. Okay, so uh, to tape down the paper, I taped it down with this Scotch masking tape. And the paper I am using is Winsor & Newton 300 pound cold pressed watercolor paper. So I'm just gonna start by getting the yellow watercolor um, with some water. Um, water it down quite a lot so it's quite a light shade. And then just apply it to the bottom of the paper. So as I go up, I'm adding more of the yellow watercolor to my brush so it gets uh, darker and darker and more intense as we go. So now I've got some orange. I know I didn't show it in the beginning of the painting, but um, I just had it in leftover in one of my watercolor trays, so I just thought I'd add a little bit of orange. So now I'm grabbing that rose color, and I'm just applying that quite generously to the page. I feel like a regular beauty guru. So 
and I'm watering down my brush and I am just trying to blend in that yellow and that red, which can be quite annoying, but just keep at it and it will happen. <laughs> So now I've mixed some of the red and the purple to achieve this um, kind of violet color, I guess? I'm not sure. Um, and then I'm also mixing it in with the red to kind of get a good gradient of colors going on. I just want them to look blended and natural, which can be hard. So now I'm just grabbing the purple straight from the watercolor tray with some water um, on my brush and then just blending that into the red. Then you're just going to want to um, keep going with that purple. I tried to get darker and darker, um, but towards the end, as you will see, um, I started adding black. If you want to get darker colors like I am right now, I am adding some of that uh, red and some more orange and a little more yellow and just trying to get a better blend of colors going on. So now I've got the black, and I'm just adding that black to the top to try and replicate the night sky look. So we've got the sunset down the bottom leading up to the purple black night sky. So now I'm grabbing some of that white acrylic ink that I mentioned at the beginning of the video and I'm just applying it in a straight line in the middle of the painting. This is going to be the base for the Milky Way look. After I've applied it, I um, cleaned off my brush in, in water and then I'm just using a clean, uh, slightly wet brush, blending out the white acrylic ink into the watercolor. So I also didn't mention this in my tools and supplies at the beginning of the painting, but I do use a heat embossing tool. Um, it's super helpful to just get the paintings dry super quick so you don't have to be waiting around. Um, I'm very impatient, so I love this tool. So I didn't like how the white turned out, so I decided to, using a slightly wet brush and a little bit of white acrylic ink, go in and add some more of that white highlight. Um, after I added it in with a wet brush, um, I just kind of tried to blend it out and using a paper towel, uh, soak up um, some of the white ink in the middle because I think I used a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, so here I am just using a wet brush and a paper towel, blending it out into the night sky. So now I'm just uh, using more of the white acrylic ink, using an old firm toothbrush 
dipping it in that so it's on the bristles and then brushing the bristles over the painting to sprinkle on those night sky stars this is one of my favorite part of creating these space paintings So um, for the Milky Way look, I try to focus a lot of the stars in the Milky Way white acrylic ink area. Um, I don't know, I just really like the look of that. So now I am using a Signo Uniball white gel pen. Again, I think I forgot to mention this in the beginning of the video, but they're super easy to find. If you just search Signo Uniball white pen, uh, it'll come up on Amazon and they're super cheap. But I use this quite a lot in all my paintings, um, mainly to add highlights, glowing effects, details like that. Um, and for this painting, I'm just adding some more stars. I kind of like to add some intentional stars. I don't know, I don't know whether it l makes it look like there's constellations or, or so, I don't know, I just really like the look of adding some intentional stars in there versus the random sprayed stars from the um, toothbrush effect. I just, I just think it makes it look a little bit more um, finished and polished. But that's just me, you guys might not like this look. In which case, just skip this step altogether and just stick with the random effect created by the toothbrush and the acrylic ink. So now I'm uh, getting some of that black acrylic ink and we're gonna start doing these tree silhouettes. So getting the little fan brush, I put a little bit in the middle as you can see there. And I'm just going to draw some straight vertical lines that will represent the tree trunks and give us an idea of where these trees are going to go. Um, a lot of the times I am referencing photos or uh, videos or anything of that nature online, but um, more often than not nowadays, since I've done this so often, I just kind of go for my imagination and just draw random lines. Um, it might help if you look at photos for reference, but I also kind of like the uh, unique random look that just using your imagination and just going for it provides. So as I'm getting to the edge of the painting, I like to kind of uh, start drawing the vertical lines at an angle try and do this to go for the look of um, when you're like using a wide angle lens or on the floor looking up at the sky and it, it like it kind of bends in the image if that makes sense I don't know if that makes sense but I just really like the look of them curving towards the edges And you're just going to want to keep doing this until you've covered the complete bottom of the sky painting. So now I am going to show you guys how to add the, uh, the trees um, and all the branches and uh, leaves and all that good stuff. So I'm adding a little bit of black ink to the edge of my brush and then I'm just holding it 
vertically so the brush bristles uh fan is like upwards i don't know how to describe that better you can kind of see it on screen and then i'm just kind of like dabbing the corner of the brush onto the page to create the the uh all the leaves and the the leaf look of the tree um again just randomly just however i think it's gonna look good i try and create like little ball areas to um i don't know i just like that look and i try and leave like some empty areas to make it look like uh because trees aren't like completely symmetrical and they they have like areas missing i don't know i just really like like the look of leaving little areas so you can kind of see the tree trunk but yeah, I just kind of add it to the corner of my brush and then dab. So yeah, just keep dabbing until you get the uh, kind of triangle um, wider at the base, skinnier at the top tree look. And just do it however randomly you please. You can, you can be looking at a photo to get a better idea of how these trees are going to look from a real life reference, but... Also, you can just go with whatever, whatever you're feeling, just go random. So here I've got a Prismacolor Fine Line Marker um, with a number three point and I'm just going to add some little branches to, get, to make it look a little bit more realistic. So once we've dabbed on all the leaves, um, you'll see some branches sticking out, which I kind of like. Again, super easy, just draw some tiny tiny little curvy lines um, coming out of the uh, main tree trunks. So yeah, just continue this technique all the way around the bottom of the page on all of the little tree trunks and you will have your tree silhouettes.
So there you go. That is the finished painting. Um, super simple, super easy to make, super quick. I think this painting took me 40 minutes, 40 to 50 minutes to make. So I hope you guys uh, really liked this video and I hope it was really helpful. And if it was, and you do wanna try painting this super simple painting, um, please send me a photo. I really love seeing all of your paintings and all of your attempts at my artwork. It really does make my day. So thank you guys so much. I hope this was a helpful video and I hope I answered a lot of your questions that you've had. And I look forward to painting some more cool night sky galaxy paintings in the future. So make sure to like, um, comment on this post and subscribe most importantly to keep up to date with all my painting tutorials. Thanks a lot guys and see you in the next video.